So we will discuss the non-price factors that shift the demand curve, which means any other factor except than the price of this product would result in a shift of the demand curve, including the price of other products, as long as we don't change the price of this product. For example, one factor is income. And when we talk about income, we need to differentiate between two types of goods, normal good and inferior good. Normal good is a normal good that we consume, which means if we have a higher income, we will consume more of this good and vice versa. If our income drops, our consumption will drop. So this means that demand will be lower, which means we have a positive relationship between income and demand. It means that income and demand move in the same direction. Inferior good, it means low quality. So this means that if you have a higher income, you're going to consume less of the low quality goods and vice versa. If you lost your job and you have lower income, you're going to consume more of this low quality product, such as $2 noodles. You're a student, you don't have much income. So this means that you will eat $2 noodles. At a lower income, you'll consume more of noodles. But what will happen if you get a job and you'll get $100,000 a year? This means that you're going to eat at a luxurious restaurant. Therefore, higher income, it will result in lower demand of noodles, which means we have a negative relationship between income and demand. Let's draw it. So, Higher income for a normal good and higher income for inferior good. For normal good, if income increases, it would result in higher demand. For inferior good, if we have higher income, it would result in a lower demand. So this is our y axis, which is the price level. And this is our x axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward slope demand curve. So I will choose any price level here in order to get the quantity. And I will do the same with inferior. And then with normal good, if we have a higher income, it means that the demand curve will shift to the right. So we're going to shift the demand curve to the right. With the same price, I will have here a higher quantity. So this means that we will have a higher quantity. But what about inferior good, higher income? It means lower demand. So we're going to shift the demand curve to the left. Once we shift the demand curve to the left, at the same price, we will have a lower quantity at Q2. So this means that Q will be lower. Then let's get another example, another factor that will shift the demand curve, which is price of related goods. And when I talk about price of related goods, I need to differentiate between substitute and complements. What we mean by substitute? It means that one good can replace the other, such as coffee versus tea. Complements, it means that if I consume one good, I have to consume the other good as well, such as if you'd like to drink cappuccino, so you have to drink coffee with milk. Remember here, I talk about the price of other goods, not the price of the product. Therefore, the price of other goods would result in a shift. The price of the same good would result in a movement. So let's talk here about coffee and tea. If we have a higher price of coffee, people will consume less coffee. So the quantity demanded will be lower based on law of demand. Consequently, this is considered a movement because we have a change in quantity demanded. Let's draw it. This is our y axis, which is the price. This is our x-axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward slope demand curve. And I will choose any price level and it will intersect with the demand curve. And then I will go vertically. I will get Q1 and this will be point A. Then in this example, we assumed higher price. So I will assume any higher price. B2, I will go to the intersect with the demand curve and then I will go vertically. And this will give me point B. So as you see here that at a higher price, quantity demanded dropped. Consequently, we moved from point A to point B on the same demand curve, and that's why we call it movement. Therefore, if the price of coffee increases, people will consume less coffee. So what will happen to the consumption of tea as a substitute good? This means that people are going to consume more tea. So this means that the demand of tea will be higher. Did we change here the price of tea? No, we just changed the demand because people start to consume less coffee. Consequently, if we have a higher demand, it means that we have shift. Why do we have a shift? Because we have a change in demand. Let's draw it. This is our vertical axis, which is B. This is our horizontal axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward demand curve, D1. I will choose any price level here. It will give me Q1 and then I will shift the demand curve to the right, D2. At the same price, I will have a higher quantity. And that's why here we call it a shift. Therefore, what is the relationship between the price of coffee and the demand of tea? If the price of coffee goes up, the demand of tea will go up. So this means that these two goods are substitute. This means that if we have a positive relationship between the price of one product and the demand of another product, 
This means that these two goods are substitutes, which means the price of one product and the demand of another product, they move in the same direction because they have a positive relationship. Or vice versa, if the price of one product goes down and the demand of another product will go down, it means that these two goods are substitute. Let's get an example about complements. Let's assume that you would like to drink cappuccino, so every time you drink coffee, you have to drink milk with it. So what will happen if the price of coffee goes up? People will consume less coffee, so the quantity demanded will be lower. Therefore, because we changed the price of coffee, it means that we have a movement. What do I mean by a movement? It means change in quantity demanded. And we will draw exactly the same graph like what we did in the previous graph. So this is our vertical axis, which is the price. This is our horizontal axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward slope demand curve. I'll choose any price level. And here it will intersect with the demand curve at point A. We assumed here we have a pr higher price of coffee. Therefore, we're going to choose any higher price at B2. It will intersect with the demand curve and then we'll go vertical to get our new quantity demanded. So here we have a new point, which is point B. Therefore, at a higher price, quantity demand dropped, which means we moved from one point, which is point A, to another, which is point B, on the same demand curve. That's why we call it a movement. So, if the price of coffee goes up, people will consume less coffee. So, the quantity demand of coffee will be lower. So, what will happen to the consumption of milk? Because they consume milk and coffee together to have cappuccino, so the demand for milk will be lower. Did we change the price of milk? No. It was the quantity demanded of coffee. We will consume less coffee. Consequently, we will start to consume less milk. Therefore, this is an example of a shift, which means we have a change in demand. Let's draw it. This is our x y axis, which is the price. This is our x axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward demand curve. We'll choose any price level, and then this will give us the quantity. Then we will shift the demand curve to the left. Then, at the same price, we will have a lower quantity, which means Q will be lower. Therefore, what's the relationship between higher price of coffee and lower demand of milk? It's a negative relationship. So this means that if the price of one good goes up, the demand of another good goes in the opposite direction, it means that these two goods are complements, which means we have a negative relationship between the price of one good and the demand of another good, and vice versa. If the price of one good goes down and the demand of another good goes up, it means that these goods are complements. So, to sum up, if the price of product X goes up and the demand of another product, which is Y, goes up, it means that these two goods have a positive relationship, they move in the same direction, therefore they are substitutes. If the price of one good X goes up, but the demand of another good goes down, which is Y, it means that we have a negative relationship, they move in inverse direction, this means that they are complements. Another factor that will shift demand curve is tests. So maybe some people will prefer one good over another. So if they have positive tests, it means that the demand will be higher. If they have negative tests, demand will be lower. For example, let's assume that people prefer Apple products, such as iMac, compared to HB, they don't like HB anymore. So they have lower tests and preferences for HB. Therefore, for Apple, we'll have higher demand. For HB, they will have a lower demand. Let's draw it. This is our y-axis, which is the price. This is our x-axis, which is the quantity. This is our downward demand curve. Then I will choose any price level here. It will give us quantity demand 1. And then for Apple, we have higher demand all the time. Higher demand means shift to the right, lower demand shift to the left. So higher demand, we're going to shift it to the right. Let's do the same with HB. And then higher demand, it means shift to the right at G2. With the same price, it will give us higher quantity. Then with HB, because people has less tests and preferences for HB, therefore demand will be lower, so demand curve will shift to the left at D2. At the same price, we will have a lower quantity demanded. Therefore, quantity demanded will be lower. Another factor that will shift demand curve is expectations. So we need to have expectations about the future. So either we have positive expectations or negative expectations. Positive expectations will increase our demand. Negative expectations will decrease our demand. Let's get an example. So let's assume that we have an expectations of higher future income. You know that after one month, you will get higher income. You signed a contract and 
you know that you will get hundred thousand dollar per year and the other example is expectations of a lower future income you know that they are making redundancy because of COVID-19 and you know that most probably you're going to lose your job therefore you know that your future income will decrease let's draw it so with positive expectations higher future income will get higher demand with negative expectations will have a lower demand so this is our y axis which is the price this is our x axis which is the quantity this is our downward demand curve i will choose any price level and this will give us the quantity demanded one i choose any price level and get the same quantity demanded here so with higher expected future income it would result in higher demand consequently the demand curve will shift to the right at d2 so within the same price it will give us higher quantity demanded but with expectations of a lower future income we will have a lower demand so this means that the demand curve will shift to the left once it shifts to the left at the same price we will have a lower quantity demanded another factor that will shift demand curve is number of buyers so either we have higher or lower if we have higher it means that more people will consume so the demand will be higher if we have lower it means that less people will consume so the demand will be lower so here we have higher number of buyers and lower number of buyers higher number of buyers it means higher demand lower number of buyers it means lower demand let's draw it this is our y axis which is the price x axis which is the quantity our downward demand curve and then i'll choose any price level in order to get the quantity demanded and then with higher number of buyers higher demand it means shift the demand curve to the right to d2 therefore at the same price we will have a higher quantity demanded but with a lower number of buyers the demand curve will be lower lower it means shift to the left therefore for the same price we will have lower quantity demanded another factor that will shift demand curve is taxes so if we have higher taxes or lower taxes so if we have lower taxes it will increase our demand because this means that we pay lower taxes so people will have higher disposable income so they're going to consume more so demand will increase or higher taxes it means that they will have less disposable income consequently demand will be lower so if we have here lower taxes and higher taxes lower taxes it means higher demand higher taxes lower demand let's draw it this is our y axis which is the price x axis which is the quantity our downward demand curve it choose any price level it will give us our quantity demanded and then for lower taxes it will increase demand curve so the demand curve will shift to the right at d2 at the same price we will have a higher quantity demanded but with higher taxes we will have lower demand so the demand curve will shift to the left with the same price we will have lower quantity demanded another factor that will shift demand curve is subsidy either we have higher subsidy or lower subsidy higher subsidy it means that people will demand more higher demand lower subsidy it means lower demand let's draw it here we have higher subsidy and lower subsidy higher subsidy it means higher demand lower subsidy it means lower demand this is our y axis which is the price our x axis which is the quantity this is our downward demand curve we have any price level and we get the quantity demanded and then with higher subsidy we have a higher demand so this means that the demand curve will shift to the right at the same price level we will have higher quantity demanded but with a lower subsidy people will demand less therefore the demand curve will shift to the left at the same price level we will have a lower quantity demanded